How's it going everybody? Gunner here. Welcome to the second part of tying kind of ultralight jig flies for spin gear. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to tie a bugger pattern. And this bugger is designed to look like stoneflies, dragonfly nymphs, helgramites, and the like. Um, and it's a super fun, easy way, bare minimum, uh, to create a realistic bugger imitation to, to finesse jig with a spin rod. Now a lot of these uh, kind of bugs that we're trying to imitate, they have kind of like a long abdomen that they use a lot for swimming. And that's going to be our marabou tail. Now some of them even have little tiny tentacles or overpositors or whatever they're called sticking out past that. So we're going to have a, a little bit of a thin, ultra wispy, almost like antenna-like thing. A little bit of a marabou tail. Then we're going to do a thorax area, a little bit beefy. That's going to be your hook shank. And then we're going to put some legs on it by palm ring and hackle. Now I want to do this kind of the easiest way possible. So we're not going to use any counter ribbing or any sort of flash material or anything like that. And we're going to do, instead of doing like marabou and something for antennas and then getting some saddle hackles, all you need is some pheasant. This is an entire pheasant hide or pheasant cape. You got the head up here, you got the shoulders, you got the back all the way down to the rump. And the really good stuff right by the butt, this is basically marabou. It's pheasant marabou. Now, uh, I got a buddy, <laughs> and he's actually uh, basically the one I, I tied jig flies with for my entire college career. And he would go grouse hunting, and then he'd tie flies with grouse marabou. And he had a name for it, and it's called bunghole marabou. It's probably not appropriate, but anyway. And I don't, I don't know what it is about the color, or the, the ultra-liveliness of the material. I don't know what it is, but he always outfished me. Now, time out. It could just be he's a better fisherman. We don't have to talk about specifics, okay? Don't throw me under the bus that easily. Pretty sure it's only the marabou. That's all it was. So we're going to tie a bugger jig using an entire pheasant. And I'll show you where we're going to pull the feathers from as we go. Uh, and it's going to be easy peasy. This is a 30 second ounce uh, jig. So it's 1 16th was what we just did the, the darter head jig on. This is a 30 second ultra lightweight. Um, and it's going to make a probably a little perfect dragonfly nymphs, Helgramite size. It's a little big for the stoneflies that I have, but well, hopefully my fish can't see that well. You could always tie it a wee bit smaller or even find a 64th or something ultra fine. So I'm going to tie in, this is my monofilament thread, six uh, one thousandths of an inch. I'm going to start that thread up here. Cut that off. The first thing we're going to do is kind of put those little ovipositor antenna looking things that come out the butt here. And then we're going to stack a marabou tail on top of that. So what I'm going to use to do that is the pheasant rump. <clears throat> so the pheasant rump is way down here. It's the long feathers at the base. And you can see if I get a really prime one, I got a really nice kind of light iridescent sheen with some very long fibers. So that's all we're going to use. I broke those ones. That was not intentional. I just need a small pinch. I want like five or six fibers, something pretty sparse. You can see that. Look at that. Very thin, very sparse, but very accurate. And I'm just going to lash that right on top. I'm not going to lie, I want a few more. And I'm allowed to do that. So I'm going to get a few more here. There we go. So we have these light, long, kind of overpositor tails. Now I'm going to come <clears throat> and get some legit marabou way down here by the butt. This stuff is the greatest stuff on the planet. Look at that. Look at that. This thing moves so well in the water. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I'm going to take this, just kind of lick my finger, kind of wet it down a little bit. Now this is supposed to be kind of the, the abdomen, if you will. So I want that a little bit shorter than those tails. I want those tails to stick out the end of that. I'm going to come and catch that right there. Lock it in place. And I'm leaving this on intentionally, and I'll show you that in a second. I'm just going to walk that back to my tail here. Make sure it's lashed down. So I have this nice short little marabou tail. And I have a little bit of long antenna sticking out past it. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do with this body 
is something that would be sloppy by normal standards and to be honest with you guys I don't care uh, but you're gonna take this thing and we're just gonna wrap it around and fill up this body you can see that was not the prettiest thing on the planet now I'm gonna take my thread now the mono thread is clear and I'm just gonna lock it in place first off you can see I built this nice smooth ramp going up to my lead here and I'm just gonna take some thread turns down over top of that so it's all protected and then right back up and I still have this nice buggy body I didn't have to do any counter ribbing I didn't have to do anything in particular I didn't have to buy another product like some sort of chenille or dubbing I just took that marabou stem wrapped it up took a clear thread over and back so it's really locked in place and it's not going anywhere and that's about that <laughs> now we're gonna tie in some hackles and now I want some short buggy hackles now we're not gonna have like a nice long rooster hackle to work with so work uh, just bear with me here because I want something that's gonna be the right length to imitate the legs without being too long and that's exactly what these are supposed to be by the way they're supposed to be legs that's what these are supposed to look like well that's about the right length <clears throat> so this guy comes from right here you can see the, the brown coloration and that'd be like the, the top of the shoulder I'm gonna get two of them one slightly bigger than the other they can be about the same size I suppose does not really matter that much I'm just gonna take a junk piece of marabou I suppose maybe I'll cheat we'll cheat just get a, a junk feather from somewhere I'll show you how to cheat alright so I'm gonna come in what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this off back here before it gets f super fuzzy on me I'm going to come and I'm going to butt that hackle stem up to my hook shank. I'm going to take a, a wrap from in front to behind and then from behind to in front. Lock it in place. Now I'm going to create two distinct uh, areas for legs. I'm going to print this down here. Get my hackle pliers on that stem. And so instead of like palmering this all the way up the body and then tying it, or uh, instead of palmering this all the way up the body and then counter ribbing it I'm just going to tie in legs in one section and then move forward and then tie in legs in another section so there that's going to be one full turn I only got one turn off that hackle yeah I think it's going to work just fine and so I'm going to take my thread and intentionally cover all that so it's super durable I don't have any exposed stem right so we're going to come up on our lead here so if you just look at this from the underside you should have your uh, whatever that's called you have your overpositors way down here you got your abdomen you got your thorax and then you have two sections of legs going up to the the head here it's actually kind of perfect now what I'm going to do to cheat uh, to fill this gap here just take some dubbing wax hit your mono here take your junk feather preen it off so I just preened it off the stem and then you're gonna take your fingers and you're just gonna wrap them clockwise on your thread and that wax is gonna help grip the grip the crap out of them basically and it's gonna allow you to fill up that little piece of lead right there so you don't have anything exposed going to wrap that all the way to the front here and then we're going to finish the fly with one more section of legs and hopefully I can get one full turn around that big piece of lead that's going to be the goal this is driving me crazy I want you locked in place all right sorry for the delay everybody I'm working on it. Just gonna get one turn. That's all I need. One full turn. Catch it off. Switch hands. Lay those down and then take a nice thread turn right over top of that stem so she's locked in place. Throw on a whip finish, come and cut that clean, 
I'm going to find the, the hackle tip. Break that off. So that is an ultra simple bugger uh, using nothing but a pheasant cape. That's all you need. Remember we used way up here the rump feathers to kind of create a little overpositor and the little antenna sticking out the back. We use some legit pheasant marabou to make kind of a little swimming thorax that's going to be back here. We built up our body just using the marabou and just repurposing it and then covering over it with thread. You don't need mylar, you don't need some sort of ribbing, you don't need to counter wrap anything, just keep it simple. And then we just selected two short hackles that would be about the right length to match legs on a, a big aggressive kind of bugger pattern like this. And instead of open spiral wrapping that and then counter ribbing it, we just did one section, wrapped over it, moved forward, second section, wrapped over it. Um, and it's a super fun, easy way, bare minimum, uh, to create a realistic bugger imitation to, to finesse jig with a spin rod. So we're going to jump into the third pattern, which is going to be a crawdad. And again, we're going to use exclusively a pheasant cape, and I'm going to tie it in this same size jig. So let's check it out. <laughs> 